Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. I, a 37-year-old male, caught my wife, Cass, a 32-year-old female, in 2018. We got married that same year. We met a few years before through business since we are in the same industry. I love her more than anything. The reason I married her was because I was going through major turmoil in my life, and she stuck with me. We had a small break before we got back together. When we started talking again, I found out that my father was indicted in a cold case murder. He was going to jail. The terrible part is, my father had custody of my nephew. At the time, I was the only family member able to take him in because my brother was also in jail. Through all of this, she said we would handle it together. I knew I wanted to marry her right then. My wife was told she likely wouldn't be able to have kids, but I wanted to marry her anyway because of how much I loved her. I had always wanted to be a dad, but I was willing to sacrifice that because I loved her so much. During this terrible time, I needed something solid. We were best friends and had been through so much together. I felt like we could take on the world. I asked her to marry me one weekend, and the following week, we found out she was miraculously pregnant. We went from talking again to becoming a family in no time. Looking back, I wish we had a long engagement to work through any issues from our previous break, but instead, we were thrown right into things. We got married in 2018, and everything seemed great. I loved her deeply, and although our marriage wasn't perfect, I was loyal to her. She was my ride or die. Fast forward to 2021. We moved to a new state because I had to take a new job after our business was derailed by COVID. This new job required me to travel a lot, and she wanted to be close to her family to get help with our three kids. We had two beautiful girls, along with my nephew. Cus had quit her last job and worked locally with her family. She hated being home, though, because her family was full of constant judgment and requests. When help was needed from them, it was like pulling teeth. It really weighed us down and reminded her why she had left the first time. Her old employer asked her to come back. However, the job was for hours away, and without really discussing it extensively, like a couple should, it required her to be gone during the week. She was planning to turn this into a remote position, but as she started the job, she began to enjoy being away. She left me to take care of the kids. I love them dearly, but it was hard. I felt abandoned. I still traveled two days a week and had to rely on her family for support, which was challenging. On top of that, I was juggling all the duties of taking care of three kids. When she came home on weekends, it was nothing but fights. I wanted and needed help, but when she was home, she rarely wanted to spend time with us. Instead, she would go out with her brother and friends. All I wanted was some help. The business we're in is primarily male-dominated. She started becoming distant, and our intimacy faded. Last summer, we moved closer to where she was working. Her time there changed her. Cass is a beautiful, tall blonde, and she constantly gets hit on by her male co-workers and customers. One of her co-workers, Seth, a 33-year-old male, was someone I knew from being in the same industry. I liked him. I never felt threatened by him because all my dealings with him had been positive. He came across as a moral man, at least from what I could tell. I didn't feel threatened since he wasn't Cass's type. After we moved, I tried everything I could to make Cass happy. I listened to her, supported her emotionally, and constantly complimented her. I took on every household task in an effort to make things work, but to no avail. Nothing I did was ever good enough. We eventually reached a point where we both agreed that therapy was our best option if we wanted to save our relationship. We agreed to start with individual therapy. She found an online therapist, which I didn't think was the best choice, but it was what she wanted. Then, one day, she asked me what my plans were for later in the week. I told her I didn't have to travel and would be working from home. She asked if I could work at a coffee shop that day because she wanted some space. 
She said she had a therapy session and wanted to work from home. I agreed. We've always shared our locations for safety reasons, but a few times in recent weeks, her location would randomly turn off. She said it was an issue with her phone. On the day of her therapy session in the afternoon, she made sure my location was working and even called me to check. I found it suspicious. I asked if everything was okay, and she said yes. I turned off my location, and 15 minutes before her session, she asked why it wasn't working. I told her my phone must have the same issues as hers. She asked if I was still at the coffee shop, and I said yes. She told me I could come back in two hours. My instincts kicked in. I left the coffee shop and saw her location wasn't at the house. I drove back and parked down the street. Five minutes later, I saw Seth and Cass both get out of his car and walk into the house. It was clear she wasn't going to therapy. I waited for ten minutes, my heart racing uncontrollably, wondering what I would find and how it would ruin me. But I had to know. I walked in, and no one was in the living room. There was no reason a man Cass works with should be in any other room. I made it to our bedroom and opened the door to find them both about to be intimate. He was completely unclothed on my bed, with her almost there. I looked at her and yelled, is this a new type of therapy? Both of them had shock written all over their faces. She ran after me, trying to say it wasn't what it looked like. I broke down. I didn't cry, but my body and mind went numb as my world was turned upside down. Seth quickly left as Cass made sure to stand between us. I tried to leave, but she physically blocked me. I am traditional in the sense that I would never physically hurt a woman, but a relentless version of Cass came out. All I wanted to do was leave. I was a former defensive lineman, and I used my old moves to evade her without having to get physical. Once I got to my car, she blocked me from leaving again. To get out, I had to trick her into thinking I wanted to talk, but I sprinted to the car and took off. I think she broke a nail trying to grab the door handle as I sped away. I'm flushed with anxiety. I don't understand how she could have done this after all I did to try to make her happy. The image of that man unclothed on my bed haunts me, especially after he always tried to present himself as a good man. I'm still trying to process this. First update. While I was driving away, I probably should have pulled over because I was hyperventilating and couldn't get my heart rate down. But the first thing that came to mind was my kids. I immediately drove to their school and picked them up. At this point, I was being bombarded with calls and text messages from Cass. I decided to block her. My only thought was making sure my kids were safe. Even with what I'd just seen, I was still thinking about what was best for them. Under my supervision, I could ensure they were okay. I needed them now more than I ever needed her. She could spend the weekend alone, facing what she had done. Once I had the kids, I drove two hours to a family member's place. This all happened on a Friday, so I had the weekend to be with just me and the kids. During the drive, Cass's mother started calling. She became our mediator. The only thing I told her to relate to Cass was that the kids were safe. I made it clear that I didn't want her to share any other information about what was happening or where we were. Cass had made her choice and broken up our family, she didn't deserve to know where we were. My mother-in-law agreed and reassured Cass that the kids were fine. I felt emotionally dead inside. The only thing that brought me any positivity was spending time with the kids. We did a bunch of activities over the weekend and had a great time together. They asked where their mom was, and I told them it was a special weekend for just daddy and them. I didn't want to cast Cass in a bad light, even though she had hurt me deeply. I knew that eventually, the kids would form their own opinions. Later, I found out that Cass was worried I might hurt the kids because of my emotional state. It just goes to show how much she didn't know me anymore. I would never do something like that. It started to become clear that she was already creating a narrative to sway people's opinions. To add some context, though I loved Cass deeply and always tried to make her happy, she had strong narcissistic tendencies. Whenever I was sick, she somehow became more sick. 
If I had a problem, her problem always had to be bigger. Cus also decided to adopt my nephew with me, but I now believe this was her way of locking me down. At that point in my life, I was very successful and had many qualities that someone else would likely find desirable. I think she realized this during one of our breaks and saw it as an opportunity. Because of my upbringing, I've always had some insecurities about myself. But from what others have told me, they believe I'm a good person, someone who constantly tries to make things better. That's who I strive to be. I'm not claiming I'm perfect or that I didn't have my own issues, I definitely did. But I've always done my best to be the person who makes everything and everyone around me better. Cass's relationship with my nephew was rocky from the start. We had jumped into family life headfirst when we found out she was pregnant and adopted him at the same time. I think she resented the fact that part of her life was stolen from her. She saw my nephew as a burden, and no matter what he did, in her eyes, it was never right. I believe their difficult relationship caused some underlying issues for him, and I constantly found myself having to defend him for just being a kid. He did have his own struggles, and we made sure to get him the care he needed. But anyone familiar with the mental health system for young kids knows that it's a slow and frustrating process, full of trial and error. I tried to balance everyone's needs, but it didn't matter, I was always stuck in the middle, trying to make peace where there was none. As for Seth, he's married with kids and still works in the industry. I'm not sure what my next step is. I can't stop thinking about the person he pretended to be and then seeing him naked in my bed. His since blocked me on all social media, which makes me think he's trying to do damage control so his wife doesn't find out. But here's the thing, during the ten minutes I sat in my car, heart racing before walking into the house, I found a way to contact his wife if it comes to that. The idea of ruining someone's life terrifies me, but if it's the right thing to do, then I'll do it. There are advantages and disadvantages to blowing up someone's world like this. It would be tough to watch him get away with it, but it's also going to be hard to make that call. I'm stuck between wanting justice and knowing the consequences of unleashing that kind of destruction. I want to be transparent with everyone, both for my own peace of mind and to protect myself, I recorded the entire situation on my phone. I've watched it over and over, and while I know that's not the healthiest thing to do, I'd rather endure all the pain now than let it haunt me later. I've unblocked Cass and allowed limited contact. I told her that I don't want to communicate much right now. But I do let her speak to the kids on the phone so she can tell them she misses them. Despite everything, they deserve to hear that from their mom. I'm planning to meet her face to face soon. I've been writing down everything I have an issue with, and I'll be laying it all out for her during our conversation. Many of you suggested I just go straight to a lawyer, and I believe that's where this is ultimately heading. But I need this one-on-one -on -one meeting for my own closure and to figure out the next steps. A lot of people have advised me to get a paternity test for my kids. Let me reassure you, I am 100% confident that these are my children. They look just like me. The timelines all match, and we share the same birthmark. The color of our hair alone would make it hard to question. In the beginning, I truly believe Kirst loved me, or at least, loved the idea of me. I don't think she would have risked ruining that. But to cover all my bases, I might still get the test, just to leave no doubts. Some of my closest friends, who've given me great advice in the past, keep telling me that I'm handling this the right way by not acting impulsively. With the video I recorded, I could completely destroy Cass and Seth. But what would that do to my kids? Ruining their mother would inevitably hurt them too, and that's something I can't bear. No matter what, I'll be able to set certain terms for how we move forward. I'm still figuring out what those stipulations are, but my priority is the kids. I'm not trying to get back with Cass, I'm trying to navigate the best path forward for them. I'll share another update after I've had this conversation with her. Second Update I know some of you have been calling me a simp because I didn't react emotionally or blow up, but I've always believed that the best revenge is calculated, with careful thought. So, I finally had a sit down with Cass. Both she and Seth were on the defensive, trying to protect themselves, but I held the upper hand. 
I knew exactly what I was going to do. First, I did an at-home paternity test, and as expected, both of the children are mine. There had been some doubt after reading what people on Reddit were saying, but I needed to know for sure, and now, I have the truth. When I arrived at the house, the first thing Cus tried to do was give me a hug. I refused. She doesn't get to play with my emotions anymore. As she started to cry, I felt nothing. I wanted to maintain control, so I let her speak first. She began by apologizing, saying she can't get the image of my face out of her mind, the look on my face when I caught her with Seth. She said she had time to reflect and realized that no matter what I did, she was drifting in another direction. She admitted that this situation made her realize what a good partner I had been. Then, she tried to explain why she did it. She said we hadn't been intimate recently, and that she convinced Seth that this would be a one-time thing, just to see if she could be intimate with someone else. She wanted to find out if it was her emotional state causing the disconnect between us. But I didn't believe a word of it. Not for a second. Cass knew I had the video of what happened, and she asked what I planned to do with it. That's when I realized the truth. With us being in the same industry, she knew the damage it could do. Ruining their reputations was her biggest fear, and suddenly all her earlier words of regret seemed like nothing more than a ploy. Cass, with her narcissistic tendencies, wasn't really sorry for what she'd done, she was just worried about the fallout. She even asked me not to drag Seth into this, saying he had a family and that it was her decision to bring him over. She claimed she convinced him that they needed to test whether she could be intimate again. What a load of BS. I didn't buy it for a second. I told her that if Seth was such a moral man, he should have known better. Sure, I understand the complexities of workplace relationships, but there are lines you don't cross, and Seth crossed that line when he got into bed with my wife. Hearing her defend him made me realize how little I had ever really mattered to her. Once again, I was nothing more than an afterthought in her world. With my kids in mind, I knew I had to take the right steps to protect both them and myself. So, I told Cass straight away, Seth needs to find another job. Our industry is small, and with his experience, he should have no problem securing something new. But if he doesn't, I made it clear that the video of their affair would go straight to his work and to his wife. She deserves to know the truth. Cus tried to push back, saying she couldn't ask him to do that. I didn't let it slide. This was a decision both of you made, I told her. How am I supposed to just let it go without any consequences? The world doesn't work like that. She then claimed she and Seth aren't even speaking. Apparently, he blames her for everything. I didn't care. You'll see him at work. Pull him aside, it's not my problem, I said. Next, I told her she needs to find a place to live, immediately. Her response? She had nowhere to go. Again, not my problem, I replied. My plan is to take the kids to stay with my family, but with their school nearby, it's tough. We don't have any immediate family in this area. I laid it out clearly, I have the upper hand because of the evidence I hold. Why should I be the one forced out, while Seth gets to keep his job and marriage intact? I did nothing wrong. I didn't deserve any of this. Cass sat there, saying she didn't know what to do. That's not my problem, I repeated. I then explained how her narcissistic behavior had affected me mentally and emotionally throughout our relationship. She needed to hear it because narcissists never think they're in the wrong, they gaslight and deflect. She had to know how much damage she'd done if she ever wanted to be a better person, and more importantly, a better mother to our kids. That's as far as our relationship goes moving forward. I'm not your friend anymore, I told her. And don't bother me with your BS. In the past, you used my problem-solving nature against me to manipulate and gaslight, but that's over. She had no response, and I asked her to leave. Now, my next move is letting Seth's wife know the truth. I want him gone from the company first. As for Cass, I don't want her job to be affected, mainly for the sake of the kids. But if they don't meet my terms, that's on them. They know the consequences. 
I've also contacted a lawyer, and we're meeting in the middle of the week. He'll have all the evidence laid out in front of him, including things from our past that highlight her behaviour. I'll post another update as things progress. Well, folks, that's all. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.